she wanted to end the relationship. And I'm still committed to saving our marriage. I do not want to give it up. We have two young boys and she has not brought up divorce, the divorce word. She's mentioned separation. And to me, separation means divorce just from what people have said that, oh, if, if you leave the house, you know, that's going to be the end. And now she's starting to make things very ugly. She's starting to build a wall between me and the boys. And we have a lot of financial stress, which I think is part of why she wants to end. So, well, you know, we are sort of blunt when we said good, but we want to explain why that is not as out of sync with what you want as, as you think. I want to begin by saying to you that, as you say, you've already been living separate lives, even though you're under the same roof. And when you are in that situation, it's more likely that walls will be built to separate than if you were in less close proximity. And what we mean by that, think about it. Now, we really don't want to get into, although we will if you want to, reasons why she wants to leave or wants you to leave. Instead, we'd like to point out, think about anything that you've ever lived or any relationship you've ever had where for whatever reason you were unhappy. Last night, Jerry Nestor had a meal in a restaurant that was very nice, but they, they got there very early and they were the first or among the very first people in this big space. And the host seated them in a very nice spot and they settled in and made themselves very comfortable. And then right behind them, he seated a mother with her three children, all rather small. And the smallest one, um, maybe a year old, maybe a little more. And so as the family settled in next to them, Jerry Nestor noticed them and noticed how beautiful they all were. But immediately the little one started taking the silver plate, the lid from the silver canister and banging it on his bread plate. And it was very, very loud. And he didn't do it constantly, just sporadically, just enough that every time he did it, Esther would jump. It was startling. Esther would have liked to have built a wall between them. In other words, it was something that she couldn't control. It wasn't any of her business. She really didn't want to control it. She actually appreciated the relationship that this family had. She knew that they were having a good time. She did not want to get into the middle of their good time. But from her perspective, she was not enjoying the interaction. Now, the reason that we go here is because we want to point out that when you are in close, if they had been seated at the other end of the restaurant or in another restaurant, it would have been easier for Esther to maintain a lovely relationship with them. In other words, as the, as the night wore on, Esther got very weary of them all. <laughs> and so when you talked about your wife sort of building walls, almost wanting to separate you between the rest of them, or we want to point out to you that that really is a byproduct of her feeling sort of trapped with situations of her own making, situations of her own observation that she is just not wanting to participate in. And it is our promise to you that her relationship with you and your relationship with her 
and your relationship with the children will be much better if you can put some distance between you that will allow a softening of the clamoring that is causing the walls to be built to begin with. You get a sense of what we are talking about. It feels like there are many things you say, well, I would see less of them and it would be harder to maintain any kind of continuity. And, and we say it's hard to maintain any of it anyway because of the wall building that's going on. And if you could just see that the bringing down of the walls is the most important thing. And the thing that most physical friends do not really hear, and we find endless ways to try to express it, is that when even in your rightness about a subject, when you try to push your rightness toward another who disagrees, no matter how right you are, it causes more pushing against. In other words, it isn't until you stop pushing that any real allowing of what you want can take place. Now, we are not encouraging the divorce either, but we have to say to you that we see so many relationships that are so improved once the contrived and controlled staying together has been released. There's something about the marriage vows in and of themselves that are entrapping. They sort of defy the art of allowing in the sense that they say, I will stay with you no matter how bad I feel. That's essentially what they say. They're not really said to open the heart and encourage free-flowing uh, interaction. They are encouraged, they exist almost without exception to protect, which translates to all of you, whether you are the one wanting to leave or whether you are the one not wanting to leave, into a sort of bondage or entrapment. So if we were standing in your physical shoes, we would keep holding to the idea of what you really want, the basis of the relationship that you really want, and we would agree with her and release easily anything that's in the way of that. For example, I want, you would say, I want lots of delicious, comfortable interaction. And you don't just mean with the children, you mean the family. I, I want comfortable interaction. I do. I want comfortable interaction. And it is our promise to you. We believe that if you were to say to her, I'm starting to get a sense of the walls that we've both been building, and maybe a separation would help some of those walls come down. And I want that, I want that, I want that, I want that. I, I want us to feel less stress. I want us all to feel more free. I want to reignite the feeling of, of well-being. In other words, n n not using entrapping sounding words, I'm wanting us to be together forever and ever, because that's kind of suffocating her. I want us all to feel happier. And anything that moves us quickly toward feeling happier, I'm all for. And then repeat some of the things that you really mean, that you meant way back then and that you mean now. I want your life to be joyful. I always wanted your life to be joyful. You will hardly believe the soothing that that would be to her. I've always wanted your life to be joyful. I never thought that me going away was the way that you were going to reach for that. But if that's what it takes, then I got to tell you, I'm all right with that because I want your life to be joyful. I want our kids' lives to be joyful. And truly, I want my life to be more joyful. And I'm willing to take the pressure off to do that. And then, and this we think is the crux, part of the crux, not all of it, but the crux that makes this feel so illogical. When there is already financial pressure, the idea of maintaining extra households uh, feels like f throwing gasoline on a fire that's already burning out of control. And so you could offer that softly. You could, you could say softly, um, I don't know how we will swing it financially. And I, I, wish, I wish that I had enough money in a bank account that I could set you up in a magnificent place and I could keep a comfortable place where our kids could move back and forth between wonderful places. That would be my heart's desire. But for now, 
I can't quite figure out how we're going to manage that. And we believe that in your willingness with your words, you will diffuse so much of the energy that is making her speak this stuff that a sort of rational soothing will come over her and she will say something to you like, well, we don't have to do anything right now. Let's just sort of see how it goes. And it is our absolute belief that if you offer these words, there will be a diffusing of the tension that then will give all of you an opportunity to take another run at this. We're not giving you these words because we're trying to help you save your marriage. We're giving you these words because we're trying to help you soothe a situation that is uncomfortable and there isn't any reason for anybody to be uncomfortable. We don't want you to be uncomfortable. We don't want her to be uncomfortable. In other words, you see yourself as a soother, not as a holder, not as a maintainer of a desire uh, for the relationship. See yourself as a soother. Say, I'm going to soothe this. I can't fix it. I can't get enough money that we can all live in great places right now. And I can't set you up with a great lifestyle. I can't do all it. I can't fix this, but I sure can soothe it. I can soothe it by acknowledging you've got some points. And I can soothe it by acknowledging that I adore you. And I can soothe it by understanding how you love our kids. And I can soothe it by understanding, by helping you to understand how I love our kids. I can soothe it by hoping for something better for all of us. And I can soothe it by seeing that you've got some points. And I can soothe it by acknowledging that help is on the way. And I can soothe it by acknowledging, you see what we're getting at? Just soothe it. What happens with most, especially when you get to this point, is both of you become inciters or inflamers of what's wrong in order to justify your position. And you don't want to justify your position because you can't justify your position without beating the drum of what you don't want. And when you beat the drum of what you do not want, you activate more of what you do not want, which makes it impossible for you to get what you do want, you say. You're not wrong. She's not wrong. You've just created this thing uh, for a point of clarity and your relationship will be stronger for it. We want to say to you, every relationship is eternal. You will always have this relationship. You will always be this family. And where you live is really irrelevant to the relationship. In other words, what you're wanting to see is instead of this family that is identified by the house that we live in, you're wanting to see relationships as the structure. So you have a relationship with your wife and you have a relationship with each child and each of them has a relationship with each other and each of them has a relationship with their mother. In other words, you're all co-creating. You're not really a family in the sense that you are a thing or a relationship. You are a multitude of relationships. There's this relationship and that relationship and this relationship and that relationship and this relationship. And all of those energies are mixing together, you see. And what you're wanting to see yourself as is a catalyst or a soother of lovely relationships. In other words, as you focus on two of your children and you see them in your adoring way by focusing upon their positive aspects every chance you get, you actually enhance their relationship with each other because you feed them the energy of well-being that makes their relationships better. In other words, you have so much more power of influence than you know. And what we've noticed every time there is a separation of a family, the family improves immediately because the beating of the...